Tell me then, when way back in the 50s, when you got interested in, when you were interested in the Indians' fishing rights, before it was fashionable to be so, uh, what triggered that? I read a book called um, Indians of the Americas. Uh, and uh, I, I, after reading the book, realized that I knew nothing about the American Indian and that everything that we are taught about the American Indian is wrong. Uh, it's inaccurate. And our school books are uh, hopelessly lacking, perhaps criminally lacking, in uh, revealing what our relationship was with the Indian. When we hear as we've heard throughout all our lives, no matter how old we are, that we are a country that stands for freedom, for rightness, for justice, uh, for everyone. Uh, it simply doesn't apply to those who are not white. Uh, it just simply doesn't apply. And we were the most rapacious, aggressive, destructive, torturing, monstrous people who swept from one coast to the other, murdering and causing mayhem among the Indians. There's one Indian in the... <laughs> but uh, that isn't revealed, because we don't like that image of ourselves. Uh, we, we don't like to see us. We like to see ourselves as perhaps John Wayne sees us. And... Uh, uh, that, and also, what we've learned about the Indians has been largely taught to us by Hollywood and by motion pictures. They have educated us. So we naturally believe that when the Indians came, that the wagon circled and the Indians rolled, rode around and, and subjected themselves to uh, terrible uh, fire and died at a ratio of 65 to 1. Both barrels of a shotgun would always get two Indians. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, that wasn't the way it was at all. But anyway, uh, Indians have been tragically misrepresented in films and uh, in our history books, in our attitudes, in our uh, reporting. And um, so we must set about to re-educate ourselves. Who are you looking at? You. Oh. Oh, no, there's a message coming, but... Oh, okay. No, I can. Huh? Uh, one thing I wanted to get into on that, too, was the subject of not only how the Indians treated on the screen, but off the screen. I know well, a guy who was say, in it. Let me tell you another thing. At a time when, when we say, especially, that we are going to keep our treaties and that we do keep our word and that uh, we, above all people, do keep our word, uh, it, I think it's important to mention that there have been nearly 400 treaties written by the United States in good faith with the Indians, and every single one of them was abrogated. It means broken or changed or altered. No, yeah, no exceptions. And the Indians howl when, uh, with laughter, I guess, when they hear a public figure like a president uh, saying other nations will laugh at us if we don't honor our treaty commitments. Oh, yeah. uh, when they can think of 400 and... I don't know what the exact figure is, 31 examples of how we haven't in the past, and this would only be the 432nd case of it if we didn't. But uh, I do go on. <laughs>